In this video, the Click OEM pre-sales team will show Mashup developers how important it is to clean up unneeded hypercubes. Let's assume you've created a beautiful single-page mashup with six objects. Each object has a so-called hypercube attached to it. This is the data requested by the object and held in the server memory. Each time you change selections, the associative engine refreshes the hypercubes with the changed data. Then, the objects in the browser will also update, and this repeats with every new selection. Now let's assume you create a second tab, which hides the first objects and introduces three more objects. Those will also trigger more hypercubes on the server, and this is the beginning of a problem. The engine does not know, in the meantime, that the browser does not need the initial six objects anymore and still keeps updating their respective hypercubes with each click. This consumes memory and processing power. Up to now, there are nine hypercubes, and if you created a third tab with more objects, this goes on and on until you suffer performance impacts. It is crucial to kill the hypercubes that are no longer needed. To illustrate this, let's first create the issue and then fix it. We will use the built-in dev hub for this purpose and create a mashup. Let's call it Kill Hypercube and use the template Basic Single Page Mashup. Let's choose an app. I'm using the executive dashboard here but you can use any app. Now, let's drag and drop any three objects into the placeholders onto your right. It doesn't matter which ones you use, just use three different ones. At the bottom, there is space for more, but let's disregard this for the moment. There are more files open here, a definitions file and the HTML. This is an important one, because here the object space is defined by a div tag. And on the fourth page, there is the JavaScript. When you scroll down, you will find app.getObjectCommands. This gets the definition of the object, instantiates a hypercube, and then renders it into the div tag. Let's mark this by copying it to the clipboard. Now, let's remove the initial three objects from the placeholders and introduce three different objects, again by dragging and dropping them. Let's go back to the JavaScript and we will find new code created for us, app.getObject. Now let's make a comment and paste the original three objects that we still have on the clipboard. Let's create a toggle for multiple pages. Find line 36 and copy this block. Paste it two times, repeating the li tag and where it reads data queue command, let's call page one with a label page one, and page two with a label page two. This will trigger a function page one and a function page two when clicked. Let's go to preview. I have to reduce the resolution a bit to see it. It's here on top now, where we have a link for page one and page two. It calls a function which we now have to create. So let's go to line 70, where you have a switch of different queue commands. Let's put a case for page one and for page two, calling functions page one and page two respectively. Go further down, and right before the app.getObject, let's put the block of getObjects inside a function page one. Please be aware of the proper position of the curly brackets. Let's do the same for function page two by uncommenting the block. So we have two pages that still do not open by default, but when I click on page one, I get three objects displayed. On page two, I get three different objects, so our single page mashup is now up and running. 
To get an initial selection, let's also add page one here, and let's introduce a variable named models, which is an empty array. Each time an object is created, it is actually returning a promise, which I can catch with dot then. And then I'll add that handle, which is nothing else than the hypercube, into the array. I will do this for all the app.get objects. Let's also log the models array so we can see what is happening here. Now save it and click View to see it in full screen. Press F12 to open the developer tools and go to the console. As we click on page 2 or page 1, the array gets filled. It starts with three objects, then the next clicked six objects, then nine objects, and so on. The array keeps on growing because we never cleaned it up. So let's go back to the code and add a cleanup function, which we have to write. The cleanup function will iterate through the models array, which has a list of all the hypercubes as we've shown, and it calls e.close. This is the killing of the hypercube. It frees up the resources. After that, let's empty the models array. To see what is going on, remove the initial console logs and get a new console log inside this loop. It needs to go on top of e.close. And now let's see what we've done. Press F12 and click on page 2 again. It first removes the initial objects and then loads the three new ones. And the same goes when you click on page 1. As you can see, each element was actually the hypercube that we closed. To conclude, a mashup developer needs to remember the hypercubes at the point where they were created. Once the front end does not need them anymore, call the close method on each hypercube so you only have those open that currently belong to the front end objects. Make this the practice when switching between all pages of your mashup. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching.